Greetings and welcome to Channel Other Doc. I am Jim, I use he him pronouns, and today we are playing Stille Nacht by Petra Volkhausen. Um, this is a story game that takes place in a little village on the coast of Germany in the early 1720s and tells the story of a ghost who was murdered on the eve of a flood a few years prior and now haunts the flood's survivors. Um, before we, uh, before we go around real quick, I just want to make sure I mention, uh, that, uh, the, this channel is still involved in a donation drive for the Bail Project, um, that is a, uh, that, that is a charity that uh, provides bail assistance to protesters, which is incredibly important right now. Um, that's happening through our uh, our Sprawl campaign. And uh, we are Team Phyllis, so if you want to check that out, I've gone ahead and thrown the link for that over into chat. Um, I also want to make sure I continue to raise awareness about Campaign Zero, uh, which is a charitable organization dedicated to ending police violence. So please check those out if you have a moment. Um, but now, let us... Uh, let us uh, uh, introduce ourselves and who it is that we are playing. I'm going to be playing uh, Carl, um, who also goes by he, him pronouns. And uh, he, uh, he is, uh, let's see, is the term an ostler? Someone who raises horses uh, and uh, also has uh, sort of a stable going as well, a livery um, as a sort of a side business thingy. Uh, but let us go around and uh, say hi to everybody. Uh, we will start with Pope. Hello. Hey everybody, Pope here, Pope World Bill on Twitter, Pope World Bill on Twitch, I lurk in all your streams. So good to be here for Ghost Story. Um, I will be playing Conrad, both of us use he, him pronouns. Uh, he's a weaponsmith and knew the deceased quite well. We'll see what everyone else's ties to this little ghost oh, yes. are here shortly. Oh, yes, indeed. Um, and uh, now let us say uh, hi to a new face on the channel, Lydia. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, I'm Lydia, half our star on all the socials. And you just made that sound really, really ominous, Pope. I am now, I don't know why, but that, I mean, it sets the mood quite right. Um, I'm playing Adelheid, and I'm a little bit of a spinster. Well, not actually spinning. I have a lot of beehives, a little bit outside of town. But they're on my own. Definitely not a witch. Um, just a customer, really. That's yeah. what the victim was. Um, we'll see what's going to happen today. I'm very excited to play this. Seeing as ghosts are kind of my thing. So, yeah. Though for a fact, four years ago, she floated, so she can't be a witch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, we both used she, her pronouns. <laughs> Cheers to that. Awesome. Awesome. Excellent. Good. I mean, if you passed the test. <laughs> I mean, we just ruined Pope's mood. But, <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, that's, that, that's nothing new on this channel. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> and now let us say, say hello to Malidale. Hello. <laughs> oh, hi, I'm Malidale. You can call me Mal. Pronouns, pronouns are he, him. Uh, I'm playing Marcus. Pronouns are also he, him. Marcus is a courier and the general delivery person for the town. Um, milk, mail, etc. Rather than having like a proper mail service, I figured the office just has Marcus do it all. And uh, Marcus also knew the deceased pretty well. Cool, cool. Awesome, awesome. And uh, now, without further ado, let us hand things over to our facilitator today, Kat. Hello. Hi, I'm Kat. I'm at Clerk of Cord, and I play games on the internet with my friends. And sometimes, every once in a while, I run them. Um, this is um, actually the third time I've run this. I um, I love this game. Uh, Petra is so good at creating uh, horror and situations that are are horrific, and the other thing I like about this game, it is unlike any other game I've ever played. Um, the facilitator is the only one that rolls dice. Um, and the, the world is basically created, the players create the story. Um, as one friend of mine put it, uh, it's much more closely related to an acting improv 
um, situation, uh, scenario, that it is a game per se. Uh, so it's, it's a lot of fun. It's different. Um, and you're about to be given a real treat because these are four of the best improv RP players I know. Uh, and I am so looking forward to the story that they're going to tell. It's going to be great. I do want to give one quick content warning for this. Um, this there will be. This is a game of death and horror. So, if you feel like you need to step away, take a break, we encourage that. We are using X and O cards uh, behind the scenes, uh, so that uh, people, our players, are safe as we tell this story, and that's important to us. So, and it's important that you be safe. So, if there's something that is getting a little too close for you by all means please feel free to take a break and uh you can always come back to it if you wish and with that said unless the any of my players have any questions we're going to get started all right as jim said there is a historical background for this game um the the historical background of Stilinok is the Christmas flood of 1717, which killed over 10,000 people as it hit the coasts of Germany, Denmark, and the Netherlands. In those days, the dikes that were meant to protect the villages and settlements were much smaller, far less sturdy in comparison to what people at the coasts are building today. During the first half of December 24th, rough winds swept across the North Sea and its coastal regions, picking up in the afternoon. When they finally died down in the evening, the people thought themselves safe. The evening tide had only been slightly higher than usual. Everyone went to bed, but shortly after midnight, a hurricane rose in the Northwest. As it began to bear down on the coast, it trapped the water of the evening tide and pushed it against the feeble dike constructions. Even before the morning tide rolled in and in the early hours of December 25th, the first dikes collapsed while most people were still asleep. A contemporary report of the time wrote that here one caught sight of frozen mothers with their babies in their arms, spouses tied to each other with ropes. There on the trees, ghastly corpses hung. The survivors had saved their lives, but nothing more than that. Their spouses, their parents, their sons, daughters, brides, brothers, sisters, friends, and acquaintances were gone. Gone was their property, cash, cattle, supplies of peat, and all sorts of food. They stood there miserably like shipwrecked. In the weeks to months that followed, the priests spoke of the wrath of God while hunger and sickness claimed more lives. That's the history. Now let's tell the story. It is the eve of December 24th, 1721. Cold and damp comes the wind from the sea. It carries with it a fog thick enough to cut through with a knife as it settles around the houses and in the muddy streets. The village lays quiet, faint light seeps through the windows, but no one moves behind drawn curtains. Everyone is holding their breath. Not in pious anticipation though. Many a holy name has slipped from cracked lips and sundown but to ask for protection, not to welcome a savior into this world. Christmas Eve, once more, will be a night of death and terror for the inhabitants of this pitiful place. Four years ago, the sea swept inland, overpowered the feeble dikes, and took whomever and whatever it wanted. Like precious driftwood, bodies lined the beach when the water finally receded. Many, however, were never found. And although rites had been said and names written, written on wooden crosses to remember them all, there was something about this flood of 1717 that just would not let the souls of the dead rest in peace. And so they returned one year later, wandering the streets, entering the houses of their loved ones. The same happened the year after and the year after that. Not all of these ghosts longed to be reunited with their families, however. Some were seeking truth and justice. It is Christmas Eve. While all is silent, you make your way to an abandoned house on the outskirts of the village. A person calling themselves a medium has invited you there to take part in a conjuring. The haunting will come to an end, 
the ghost will rest in peace, so they promise, if only you are committed to speaking the truth and nothing but the truth. Ghost, they say, singular. They know, they know you've been haunted by one soul. Year after year, you sit down at a table placed in the middle of an otherwise empty room. There are others here, all of whom you know well, some intimately. This is a small village after all. You see tense faces, you smell guilt. The medium's voice creeps through the room. You were all asked here tonight to bring an end to what has been an unnecessarily prolonged ordeal. I know that you have been visited by the same soul, someone who died a terrible death four years ago, but it wasn't the flood that killed them. All of you were close by in this poor soul's final moments. What each of you did, I do not know. Yet. But tonight we shall find out. Honesty is your only way out. You will suffer tonight. You may even die. But if you do, it is with a chance for redemption. And now I'd like each of the players to uh, enter the room, describe your character, give us their appearance, and uh, how they react as they see the petite woman sitting in a chair at a table, a fire burning in the hearth. It gives off some light, not much warmth. On the table is a thick pillar candle, a bell, and a piece of salt that has been hard won from the peat of the shore. She turns, Conrad, welcome. He sort of huffs as he walks in. Um, stout, broad fellow, ruddy in the face, um, has constant bits of soot that lines underneath his eyes and cheeks. His eyes are bloodshot. He has not slept well in quite some time. The wood creaks under his weight, the floor, as he just draws up a chair, sits, waits, and stares. Adelheid, come in. Adelheid walks in, looking around with a very curious face. She's an older woman, long, blonde now, starting to gray hair, in a very loose braid. Seems unusual, as most women in the town of her age will cut it short after a while, but she is a little bit of an odd one out anyway. And the beekeeper, slightly on the outskirts, always muttering to herself, always a little bit of a stranger. She looks around, she nods at Conrad, she nods at the medium, and she sits down, hands in her laps. There's a little talisman around her neck, just a little cross with a red string tied together. Hello, everyone. She smiles warmly. Marcus, come in. Marcus comes in slowly. Uh, the lines on his face more noticeable. He used to be a jovial man, always smiling, always cheerful. It's obvious that the time since the flood has taken that from him. His hat is in his hand. He nods at Conrad, nods at Adelaide, nods at the medium. 
Evening, evening. Carl? Uh, Carl will, uh, will stride in, um, uh, perhaps after a moment after having, uh, a brief argument with someone outside, uh, with, will, uh, with the, uh, it's probably the one who drove him down here. Um, it's just, just wait for us, all right? Thank you. Uh, and he'll turn around and he'll come in. Sort of wave. He is uh, he is in his uh, mid fifties, um, and uh, you know mo- moves a little slower than he used to. Moves is a little bit less uh, a little bit less cheerful than he used to be, but he tries to maintain it. Um, he uh, he's clean shaven. He has uh, kind of slick backed hair. He is wearing a long coat, a uh, long great coat, uh, and he's got a cravat. He's uh, he's wearing. He, he decided to dress nicely tonight. Oh hey, hey Matias, thank you for the for, for the for the, uh, for the sub. Um, and uh, no, he basically is, um, and so he's cravat and uh, and and vest and riding pants. Yeah, uh, so he decided to he decided to dress up for this, um, and so he takes off his uh, his top hat. Um, these are clothes that are that are fine clothes, but they have seen better days, um, because unfortunately. As uh, when the flood happened, he lost a good portion of his inventory. He takes care of a lot of horses, um, and uh, it uh, it kind of it, it it hurt things for him quite a bit. But he did have enough to keep kind of going, just sort of uh, on his own afterward, uh, with you know with his family who he who he has, um, and uh, we just sort of look around as uh, so we're telling a ghost story tonight, are we? <laughs> And he sort of chuckles and uh, looks at, uh, he, he nods and smiles at Adelaide. He would just sort of give, gives a cursory nod to Conrad and uh, just sort of glances, looks down at Marcus and kind of, uh, kind of winks and then sits down. Magda, the woman that has invited you all here, arrived just over a week ago. She's a widow visiting her husband's family. She had heard stories of the hauntings, and it drew her. And she, some say she has the third side. Some say she's a witch. She would say that uh, she has a gift. She's in her mid thirties. Her dark hair pulled back in a severe bun, streaks of gray in it. She's dressed all in black with a heavy woolen shawl wrapped around her against the cold. It is. A few hours before midnight on Christmas Eve. The wind, the fog, perhaps another storm. Always seems in the last few years that there's been a storm on this night. And you are sure I remind you. Put... Sorry. Go. No, go ahead. And you're real sure that you are sure this will put her to rest? She will be at peace, finally. If we can get to the truth. But we must have truth. And you must be honest. This will not be easy. And it will be dangerous. And it is possible that one of you may die. Adelheid grabs our talisman and holds, holds it close. Interesting. If you're all ready, we will begin. And she sits back in her chair, folds her hands in her lap, closes her eyes. And as she closes her eyes, something else appears. It's as if Magda fades and a new form takes place transparent you all recognize this shape this thing because you've each seen it every year for the last four years on this very night 
because it's come to you, haunted you. And feel its gaze resting on you, Carl, as the ghost whispers, What is my name? say you are, and your name would be Kirsten. Kirsten. You are Marcus. How old was I at the time of my death? Conrad, what were my daily chores? Primarily, you were a seamstress. Made you happy. I lied. Where was my body found? We found you in the flour mill. We don't know why. I thought it was the flood. I died four years ago. But my soul finds no rest. I drift aimlessly. Year after year, I am put back here. I wish to move on. Carl, are you here to help me find out how I died so that I may rest in peace? I am here in the hope that you rest in peace. Marcus? Are you here so that I may rest, finally? Yes, I am. And you, Conrad? Yes, I'm here so we can all get some rest. Adelaide? Yes. I wish for you to rest. And with that, Magda seems almost to completely disappear, and there is a woman, a woman you all know as Kirsten, who died four years ago, sitting in her chair. And I would like all of my players to please let me know if that was a truth or a lie. There's a faint smile on Kirsten's face. Uh, a tenseness 
eases ever so slightly as she looks at all of you. Thank you. For being here, for helping me remember. On the morning of my last day on earth, the morning of my last day on earth, Carl, I was, I was at the, the store? Yes, I was, I was at the, the, the store uh, to buy something, I believe. Oh, why did our paths cross that morning? Uh, Christmas shopping, I think. That's uh, what it was. I was uh, was there for similar reasons. I uh, my uh, <coughs> my son Jonas was uh, going to be uh, going going to be coming back to see us uh, that evening, and I was I had just found out, and I was picking up something for him. As I uh, thought he was still going to be uh, uh, off fighting, but uh, <laughs> turned out uh, that was not the case. He, uh, they were, they were letting, letting him off for Christmas. Conrad, were you there too? Were you there with me? I was there, but I wasn't with you. I was on my way out. Grabbed a few various sundries. Try and make things pleasant for tomorrow. Well, that tomorrow. But things were tense between the two of us. We argued the day before. Adelaide, why, why were you and Carl ignoring each other? It is no secret that we do not always see eye to eye. He's an old grump, and I have no problem telling him that. I'm a practical grump, thank you very much. <laughs> a grump nonetheless. Marcus, where were you that morning? I was making my rounds doing some of the last minute deliveries for everyone's Christmas. I believe I passed almost everyone that day. Conrad, why did we fight? What were we fighting about? We were fighting. I don't remember precisely why. I can only guess. Considering that word be when Marcus got into my ears at the start of the month. Still living under our roof. But it was obvious he weren't happy with me. 
that's why we were arguing. Marcus? I do not remember. I remember you came to me late the night before, after this argument had happened. And you stayed with me. Are these truths or lies? Yes, I, b I believe kind of, uh, I was I was there. I was shopping, yes, for gifts. And we had fought. And Carl, yes. You, you saw me shopping for the gifts. It was definitely no secret that uh, you, Adelaide, and Carl did not get along. I remember you leaving in the morning, Marcus, to begin your deliveries before I went shopping. Yes, I remember. I remember these things. Conrad, at, at midday, when the church bell rang, I, I know I saw you, but I, I don't remember where. I don't remember where. Where was I? What, what was I doing there? Busy with <laughs> the orders getting ready for the new year, considering the war was still going on. And finding out that, you know, your, your cousin had come home. I also wanted to try and make him a little something before he had to go back to the front. You swung by looking both upset but somewhat apologetic. But our conversation was very brief. I was curt. Was I trying to make amends? Is that why I came by? I didn't give you enough time to find out. You were busy, you sent me away. Later, later you said.
Adelaide, was, was anyone else with me? Was I out by myself? You were out by yourself? There was a shadow upon you. I thought I'd... I thought I'd see you cry, but you would deny it. Marcus, it was noisy, I remember. Why, why was it so noisy in the marketplace that, that day? It was noisy because some soldiers had taken it upon themselves to drink starting in the early morning and they were causing quite the ruckus in the marketplace. Yes. Carl, Carl, yeah, I remember, you said you had to go home. Why did you have to run home? Well, Yes, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to stay out and, uh, well, among other, <coughs> well, uh, I wanted to stay out there for a bit longer, but, uh, as you'd sort of noted, there was a bit of a ruckus, and, uh, I'm afraid that, uh, my son, your cousin, uh, was a part of it, and, uh, I, uh, upon finding out th that, I, uh, shall we say, uh, rather expediently swept him up and took him back to have a little conversation with him uh, that was uh, rather unbecoming conduct uh, for uh, uh, someone in our family. Yes, and, uh, I remember mutterings of the soldiers being there was not welcome that there would be trouble. A shadow, Adelaide. You had not been yourself for a little while now. We all saw it. Of course, in a place like this, there's gossip. I thought maybe if you had someone to talk, but you, you did not appreciate my prying. No way. I imagine not. Truth or lies? I was sad, I remember. I remember when I came to visit you, Conrad. I 
I remember how abrupt those Kurt you were. And you were clearly busy, but still. And there was I walked by myself that that day in the market. Just as you said, I lied. I was I was by myself. Carl, I remember my cousin. Yeah, well, among the soldiers, you were rather red-faced as you hustled him out of there, protesting the entire way. So many soldiers. I remember. Remember, in the early afternoon, the wind got so strong that it started to pull the shingles off some of the houses. It, uh, off of, we could hear the the church tower creaking as the wind caught it. Marcus, you, you were there to help, weren't you? Yes, I was, I got stopped in what I was supposed to do and asked to rush to the church. The wind something had broken it in the wind and they needed as many men as they could get i think even the soldiers some of the soldiers came perhaps to make amends for earlier but carl you did not help why You know, uh, that place has been falling apart for ages. I uh, didn't really see it as I didn't really see it as uh, as as anything more than a lost cause. But that aside, also uh, back home, the 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 horses were getting rather upset at everything and we had it took everyone to help contain them they perhaps sensed what was coming and I rather wish we'd listened to them more <laughs> they knew better than those fools at the church Conrad, how did I get hurt? Right about that time, you and Adel had gotten into a heated argument. I don't know about what. I kept my distance. I just watched from my shop window. Adelaide, why would, why was there a fight? Why were we fighting? I like glares at Conrad. It was a very, very senseless argument, and I am not proud of it. I was uh, perhaps overstepping my boundaries and mentioning some of the gossip that everyone was talking about anyway. Um, I 
thought I would talk some sense into you. But instead I caused you more hurt. And I'm sorry. I'm not surprised that you choose to haunt me every year for this sin. You ran off. I don't know where to. And you just watched Conrad. Yes. I did just watch. Part of me wanted to go up and help. Another part of me was happy to see you hurt. For someone else to confront you was just being me instead. Carl, Uncle Carl. Yeah, Un my Uncle Carl. Yes, dear. My Uncle Carl. You remember? I, rem I remember. I remember the horses. I remember hearing the horses. I remember thinking, of course, you must take care of the horses. I remember truths or lies. you all just an honest <laughs> it's the story is more painful if you tell the truth <laughs> indeed I remember I wanted to go to you Marcus at the church I wanted to to see you. I'd been so busy that morning, and as the storm was blowing up, coming in, I remember wanting to see you. And I remember Adelaide stopping me, confronting me with the gossip. I remember wanting to strike out at you cause you back the same hurt that you caused me. I'm not surprised you were watching Conrad. Husband. Keeping your distance. As you had been. For so long. And yes, Uncle Carl, I remember Jerome and the soldiers and the horses. And it was almost a toss up as to who was making more noise, the drunk soldiers or the screaming horses. But I remember it all. I remember that. It was the beginning of the storm. We had no idea what was coming. And with that, we're going to take a break. Right oh. Yes, this, uh, this is a delightful web that we're weaving, and I cannot wait to see where it goes. Um, but we're going to go ahead and take a break, um, during, during which doubtless, uh, that, that was an interview that I've slotted and will play probably. And uh, we will see you in a little bit to see what happens in the second part of this. See you soon.
folks, Tiana and Lauren here from Salty Sweet Games. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for having Hi. us. Uh, Yay. Just, we just wanted to, uh, to talk for a little bit about um, some of the awesome stuff that you folks do and have been doing. And uh, I think the first thing I wanted to find out about is how each of you kind of got into the whole streaming thing and uh, where, when it came across your radar and how you then decided to do it. And uh, whoever would like to go first may do so. <laughs> yeah, I'll go ahead. Uh, so I think it was maybe 2016 or 17. I actually can't remember now, which is really funny. Uh, but I was on Tumblr back in the day and I came across uh, fan art and fan fiction about this game that was going on. And I was like, a game? You make fan fiction about a game? Um, and so it was actually a D&D stream. So I tuned in and started watching, binged the crap out of it. Uh, it was over a summer and I was just blown away. I, I had never been exposed to RPGs before that. And so I got on my Twitter, which also had been gathering dust basically. And I started following a bunch of streams, uh, their, you know, their Twitter accounts and other geeky gaming uh, people. And I was reached out to uh, as like, hey, we accept new players, uh, people new to streaming. Uh, if you're interested, I'm like we have a spot for you. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so nice. Oh, wow. These people here are so friendly. It's so different from the other communities that I used to be part of. Um, and, and that was my start. It was just somebody offering a hand, which is, I think, a uh, spirit that we try to keep in mind as we've gone forward. So that's how I got into it. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I, I was actually pretty similar. Um, <laughs> so a, a YouTuber I really liked um, started talking about a D&D &D game they were in, um, actually on the official Wizards channel. And I was like, what, what's D&D? &D? Huh? <laughs> uh, so um, I went and followed them over there and started watching. And I was kind of just like, oh, this is exactly what I want. This is, this is what I want in my life. Um, I think this was first year of university, so I was kind of going through a minor existential creative crisis, um, having moved away from home, moved away into a totally different place and in a different point in my life. And so um, I, I watched that show for months and months and months and then um, and started using my Twitter, which I had only used to do really weird tweets. I, you could probably find them. I, I wouldn't recommend, but <laughs> you could probably find them. I need to start um, searching right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I, I got followed by a stream and I, I went to go check them out. Um, and it happened to be the stream that Lauren was on, um, actually. And so I started watching and I got hooked and I would watch uh, the shows every day even secretly at work when I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and then uh, this channel had open viewer games. Uh, so I got up the courage uh, about um, half a year after I started watching uh, and, and signed up for it. Uh, and then I got in and did my first game streamed. Uh, so I think that was my, would have been my third game ever because I had one game that I tried to play in and had to nope out of, I ran a home game for a year, and then I jumped into streaming. So, <laughs> been baked in right at the beginning. That's awesome. Uh, so, uh, how did we? Uh, so, so, how did the transition go then from um, uh, playing in, in these different streams to then actually actively uh, streaming streaming yourselves and uh, and such? That was very much about. Uh... I think wanting to be in charge of our own destinies in a way, because <laughs> both of us have had experience working for other streamers, like mm -hmm. on different kinds of teams, whether it's social media or production or community management, um, all sorts of things. And we decided that 
kind of the best way to get out the content that we wanted was for us to be in charge. So we kind of crash coursed through everything. Like, yeah, Kiana, yeah, Kiana learned how to make uh, overlays and I yep. learned, you know, the broadcasting software and we kind of taught each other different things, uh, sought out our friend's advice on it and just dived in. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, we've had some really, really good experiences with uh, the other communities we've been with and also some negative stuff, too. And like, it's so hard sometimes to just have that that bit of like safe space for yourself and creating that safe space um, and be able to do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that was really kind of we just were like one day we were like, let's make a channel together. We'll just have it as a placeholder until we want to really go gung ho on it. Um, so it, it, it's technically Salty Week Games has existed for like, I'm going to say almost a year. Like, yeah, we put it together like almost a year ago. Yeah. Um, but we didn't really start using it until um, like late 2019 when we did some video game streams and stuff and some one shots uh we did a charity stream mm -hmm. uh and it's really just been the beginning of 2020 that we're we started to really kind of go into long-term production of actual tabletop content and actually have a youtube channel that we put stuff on because we didn't do that for <laughs> a while <laughs> um so it's yeah it's been it's been kind of just both of us are people who when we get going on something we just we get going <laughs> yep absolutely <laughs> oh, that was awesome and i think i remember seeing one of those uh those early streams i think it was monster prom um yes. if i remember right and that, that was just such an utter delight just sort of watching that and it was like you definitely have something there <laughs> <laughs> Definitely need to definitely need to keep following that. Awesome. Well, if uh, folks want to find your stuff online, uh, where should they go? Twitter.com slash salty sweet games and twitch.tv slash salty sweet games. Yeah. Synergy. We're 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 both there. Um, obviously our shared stuff and then you can find us individually where we also just retweet our stuff from Salty Sweet Game. We we just it's just a lot of back and forth on all three accounts. Awesome. Excellent. Excellent. Well, folks, definitely go and check that out. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to throw things back over to me, probably. Uh, <laughs> either that or if we're still running around panicking in the background, it'll be a, a nice moving image over uh, whatever it is that we're doing right now. Uh, but in the meantime, folks, take care. We'll see you later.
we have returned. And now there will be more things happening. <laughs> as the story of the ghost is further uncovered. It is the evening, the evening, Christmas Eve. Um, the the wind had died down, and it even stopped raining. I had some place I wanted to go. I, w I wanted to go. Do I want to see Marcus? My husband? Adelaide, why did you interrupt me? Well, you were on the road out, out west, to the forest, the creek flower mill and I had seen I had seen Marcus go there a couple of minutes before I thought you were getting yourself into more trouble which you did and she looks at Marcus in a quizzical slightly accusatory Marcus, I lost something. Something was taken from me. What was it? What did, what did I lose? What did you take it? I did not take it, but you did lose something. You had lost your wedding ring, the one from Conrad. Carl, I, you, you look so disappointed, Uncle. Why were you so disappointed? Well, before your little excursion out into the woods, we had a talk. And, uh, We were not, uh, I was not disappointed in you. I could never be disappointed in you. I was disappointed in him. And I am pointing toward Conrad. And it's the way that he was The way that he was treating you, that was... was not right. Not, uh, not fitting for people in our family. So easy Should've... for you to judge, old man. Well, if you'd paid attention to who she was, and her and what she in fact needed this would not have happened you don't have to work for your wealth some of us have to actually sweat I worked every day of my life I started with one horse but 
out. Still. <sighs> Granted, I did not expect to... Uh, I turned back to the ghost. I did not expect you to take off with one of the horses after that, and I was a little... I was a little surprised at that. But... I was hoping you were just going to go and clear your head. You were inside, Conrad. I saw you through the window. Yes. I was there at Carl's. I had finished up the small dagger for Jonas. I was dropping it off. I saw you and Carl talk. I saw you cry. I saw you run off to the stable and start galloping off to I didn't know where. And so you watched as you kept your distance where you have been. Considering you were already crying. I didn't want to make things worse. Truths or lies? I wanted to get to the flour mill. I knew Marcus would be there. Didn't think I'd run into you, new uncle, as I was borrowing a horse. I didn't think I'd see you either, Conrad. But I'm not surprised. You seem to have spent quite a bit of your day watching in heated discussions, arguments with other people. Keeping your distance. Adelaide is trying to protect me. Warning me. I knew you hadn't taken the ring, Marcus. But I was frantic over losing it. Uncle Carl, always so...
proud of our family. Whether we deserved it or earned it. We still felt that we ha should have it. My favorite uncle. I don't think you thought anyone was good enough for me. Uh, there might have been one. I say just sort of glancing over in Marcus's direction. How things are getting spicy. <clears throat> Conrad. In the early morning hours, the water had already flooded our home. It rose, rose. I wasn't asleep, I was awake. I remember that. But there were so many that were still were. I remember a house flooding. And that's when I headed to the flower, back to the flower mill, thinking, hoping maybe Marcus was still there. I don't know, but I wasn't asleep. I was on my way there. Where were you? He came home after running off. Then the rain hit. I moved up from sleeping on the couch downstairs, up to the bedroom. Slipped into bed, you were tossing and turning. I quietly let you know that things were getting bad. Maybe that we should move to the church. It was the highest ground anyway. You said you had to go see your uncle. Make sure that they and the horses were okay. He ran off through the floodwaters. I should have followed you. Then, instead of waiting, dithering about, deciding whether or not to help you or not. But I let you rush on ahead of me. That's on me. Marcus. Why, why were you awake? You... Why did you wake up before the flood came? wasn't really sure something just didn't sit right the day had gone so poorly for so many into town already and before the rain hit when it calmed we all thought the worst was over something something in my stomach said that it wasn't over and Carl Uncle Carl why, why were you sleepless that night For many reasons. Aside from the fact that the horses wouldn't shut up. We're spending, doing what we could to try to 
Okay. Trying to save them. We didn't realize what was happening until a good quarter of them were already gone. Adeline, what did you pray for before going to bed that night? I don't pray often these days. But that night, I sent a prayer to all the gods I could think of, really. Church teaches us all of them, the ones my father taught me of, to keep us safe, to teach you some reason, I guess, and comrades some, some empathy. None of them listen. Conrad, did you really believe I was going to my uncle's? It's part of the reason why I stayed behind. I didn't know. You seem sincere. You seemed in a bit of a panic. You rushed off. But in the back of my head, I thought you were going to Marcus's. But with the speed at which you were going, I was fairly certain you were headed to Carl's when I finally left. Seeing, seeing just how bad it was, I picked up the pace, but you were a good ways ahead of me. That's why I saw you out by the ranch that night. Truths or lies? I will warn you that because you have all been so truthful that it is now very, very difficult to lie to the ghost. I remember you coming to bed, husband. I remember feeling at unease, the storm from everything that had happened. And I had grown unused to you sharing our bed. As I could hear the storm get worse saw the flooding. I knew where Marcus was. That's why I was going to the flour mill. Uncle Carl, I'm sorry for the loss of your horses, I believe you. I could hear them all over, even above the wind. Sometimes it seemed as if their screams were the wind. I 
I hope the gods brought you comfort that night, Adelaide. Because I don't think they were listening. You had much to be uneasy about, Marcus. I think we both did. I believe you. It's getting so clear. I can almost remember all of it. Almost. Almost. Shortly before I died, I had gone to the flour mill. I had gone there to, to see Marcus. The last thing I saw was my death. But you were there. You were all there. I remember all of you there. Adelaide, why didn't you prevent my death? It was too late. I had such nightmares. And you were in them, and I thought all the prayers in the world are worth nothing if we don't take matters into our own hands. The wind was howling, and the creaking of the dike. I had to get out and see if I could help them. And I couldn't. Marcus? Marcus, why didn't you prevent my death? tried or I thought I tried but there were arms holding me back telling me this was the punishment for what we had done forcing me to watch I did. I tried to get free. I tried. Conrad. Husband. Why didn't you prevent my death? Dear, I rushed to the ranch. It was chaos. Bang of the horses. Their extended family doing their best. Salvage what they could. I searched for you there. By the time... By the time I realized you weren't there, Carl was already ahead of me. rushing to the mill. I 
I thought better of you. That led to your death. Uncle you were there. Why did you not prevent my death? Because I thought that's what I was doing. I didn't... Therene, and I didn't realize, I didn't see clearly. I didn't realize he had given you his coat. I thought it was him. I saw him, I didn't realize I'd gotten ahead of him. I was mad with grief and I was taking everything and I was on all of my anger and hatred and putting it into one figure. So I took Jonas's gun and I thought I found him at the mill. I thought I was stopping him from harming you. He wasn't there at all. It's all my fault. We did bring this on ourselves. This was our sin. We are worthy of nothing. Is that a confession, Uncle? Damn it, yes! Yes! It is, yes. I'm so sorry. I, I would never hurt you. Why were you wearing his coat? Truth or lies.
My name is Kirsten. My body, although interred in the family crypt. My soul has found no rest. I've sought peace for four years. As I come to you each year, looking for truth. shopping for gifts after having fought with my husband Conrad the night before. Carl, you... Uncle Carl, you saw me. You and Adelaide were obviously ignoring each other as you tended to do. No secret that you two didn't get along. Marcus. Yes, I remember you... I remember you leaving our bed that morning to go make your deliveries. And Conrad, when I saw you, there was guilt, sorrow. Things had been so distant between us for so long. I went to go see you to try and make things better. It was Christmas Eve. But you were so abrupt and so curt, sending me on my way. Walked alone in the market. Watched as the soldiers got drunk. Uncle Carl, Kevin cousin, hustling him out of there because he was embarrassing the family. Shame. No shame on this family. Too much pride. And Adelaide, trying to be a friend. Maybe not the best way to go about it, but I understand it. As if I didn't know about the gossip. Marcus, I hadn't seen you all day. You'd been out. Wanted to see you again. Just tried to get to the flour mill. Went to my uncle's to borrow a horse. It stopped me. Uncle Carl, I don't really know how disappointed again you were, Conrad. Not that I was doing anything wrong, you understand. But that Conrad was treating me poorly. Conrad, still keeping your distance, watching. I'd lost the ring. I was frantic. I remember coming to you, Marcus, asking if you'd seen it. Had you taken it for whatever reason? I don't know. I wasn't thinking clearly with the storm. Adelaide stopping me because I was trying to get to Marcus, trying to protect me, to tell me to be careful, to be safe that there was something in the storm, I believe. Hurried home, storm got worse, couldn't sleep. Conrad, you came to our bed, the houses began to flood. Neither one of us sleeping. I knew Marcus would be back out at the flour mill. So I lied to you again. Told you that I was going to my uncle's to help with the horses. And at this, Kristen, who seems so real to you now, their presence with you in the room, stands from the chair and begins pacing the room. You can see Magda's body almost translucent, 
slump in the chair as Kristen walks around the room. A shadow over her still. Remember hearing the horses screaming in the wind, Uncle? We all know the gods you pray to, I don't know. I'm not so sure if any of the gods were listening that night. Her hand trails across Adelaide's shoulders. She passes behind her. And then on to Marcus, lingering in just a moment before coming to stand behind Conrad, her hands on his shoulders. I had left without a coat, a shawl, nothing. I was just thrown on just a dress and the boots and had gone running out of the house. I remember when you found me, caught up with me and placed your coat around my shoulders. Those to moose to stand behind Carl. Her hands once again resting on his shoulders as well. And you, Uncle. So caught up in your pride. And the family name. I need you to mark two harm. And you watch as Carl ages in front of you. This older man has now become nearly infirm. His life pulled away. This will not give me back my life. And I cannot yet take yours. But I can make you suffer. Do what you like. I have damned us. You have damned yourself. And what I have left me is nothing. May you find peace. But I don't think you will ever find joy. And it's time for me to go. And with that, Kirsten walks out the door. Onred breaks the circle and rushes after her. She's gone. All you see is mist and fog. A light rain and the church bell tolls. It's midnight. There is no church. The church was washed away. The bell was lost. The village has been unable to replace the bell. Bells are expensive. And yet at midnight, still the church bell tolls. Magda sits up smooths back her hair. You have done well. You have brought peace to a soul that was suffering. She looks over at Carl. I'm not sure if your suffering will be shorter than hers or longer, but it will be more deserved. Merry Christmas. And she walks out of the room. Leaving Conrad uh, outside. Carl still sitting at the table. Now, easily 20 years older. Adelaide and Marcus. 
How do your stories end? Adelheid will open her mouth to speak to Carl and then think better of it. Scoff. And look at Marcus reaching out to quickly squeeze his hand. Nod Marcus to the, back. Nod to the medium, to Magda. Thank you. Walk out to where Conrad is kneeling in the dirt. And squeeze his shoulder. Home. To light a candle in the window. Marcus looks at Carl for a long moment, pushes the chair back loudly, stands up, walks towards Conrad. And in Conrad's hand, he places the ring he found in the mill. The ring that was given to Kirsten by Conrad. And all Marcus says to Conrad is, I loved her too. I'm sorry for my part in this. he walks towards the edge of town instead of home. I think that uh, Carl doesn't say anything after everyone else leaves and he's been sitting in there for a good 20 minutes, his servant finally comes in and collects him. Puts him in the carriage out, outside. And on the way up to what, up to the remains of the estate, as they're heading up the side of, uh, they're, they're heading up the cliffside, Carriage door open, and Carl flings himself out. <laughs> and so a life is given for a life. And that is the end of our story. Thank you very much, my beautiful, beautiful, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful players, for telling this story. I love you very much. You guys are the best. Thank you, Kat. Mm. You guys okay? <laughs> weirdly, weirdly cathartic for <sighs> not, not really being anywhere close to real life experiences for me. But that's RP. That's RPG. That's, that's what it does. So I've played this once before, and uh, it, it was a uh, during a playtest, and in that playtest I was also the murderer. <laughs> Just so um, people who are watching who aren't familiar with this game, I did not know who the murderer was. Nobody knows who the murderer is, except for the murderer. And that's done in secret. I made an individual video call to each of them, closed my eyes, held up a piece of paper with something written on it. Um, I have no idea... I, I did a blind. I honestly had no idea who was the murderer on this. Um, so it's a surprise to me as well. Um, I'm surprised we got a confession, to be honest. Um, I didn't think we were going to get one. That was interesting. It's a good one, though. Yes, it was. Oh, that was brilliant. I'm watching, my brain's catching up and catching up. I'm like, oh! <gasps> I genuinely had no idea. Like, obviously, I knew it wasn't me, but I genuinely had no idea until the end. 
You know, my strategy generally when I play this game if, is, if I'm the murderer, is to hew as close to the truth as possible. <laughs> and, um... You did. There was not one lie told. <laughs> not one lie was not told. Not one. Not oh, one. Amazing. Not one lie was told. Look at us fucking cinnamon rolls. <laughs> well, well, co compared to, to previous instances, because this is this is my third time playing. Every other time, there has always been one person who habitually lies. So this this was a first. And sometimes that liar's not the guilty party. Yep. So th this this was absolutely unique. It was it was as is always with this game, a beautiful, beautiful ghost story. Filled with guilt and terrible people. <laughs> yep. As most good ghost stories are. Isn't that right, Lydia? Lydia has quite a bit of experience I mean. with ghost stories. <laughs> Mine usually a little bit bloodier and gorier, but I do like the ones that are just sad fates of people making the wrong decision in a moment where you have to make a decision split second um so yeah being a ghost tour guide in edinburgh there's a lot of that stuff and this is this is up there this was up there with the best of them to be perfectly honest Oof. nice oh this is uh, this was very cool thank you so much cat for bringing this to us um, I, I really appreciate it, um, and uh, I, I, uh, I, I adore this game, this is a great game, and uh, I, uh, I urge folks to check it out. This is Stille Nacht by Petra Folkhausen. Uh, you can go and follow her on Twitter, you can find her uh, link to this game that I just put out in the chat, if you are so inclined. Let's go ahead and uh, do our outros if we're good for uh, for that. Um, feel free to uh, feel free to continue unwinding throughout the outros if you so desire. Uh, you know, feel free to to say any final thoughts you had about the session, and then of course tell folks where to find you um, and what have you. Um, and uh, we will go ahead. We're going to do reverse order, so we're going to start uh, with our facilitator cat. Oh, hi. Um, I'm Kat um, at Clerk of Cord. Um, I'm not around much on Twitter, but uh, you can find me hanging out in various discords um, right now. Um, I love this game. I, it's like, Jim, I was supposed to be in two different playtests, and both times something came up that I wasn't able to participate. And so I have yet to play this game. Um, I ran it for the first time about six months ago. Um, on off the table i've run it again since then for the stalwart initiative um i love this game i i this is the only thing i've ever gm this is the only game i've ever run well except for a couple of honey heists which is, <laughs> there's a dichotomy there and i'm not <laughs> sure what that says about me but i'm sure it says something um uh, but i just I, I love this game so much from the moment i read it it's just so beautiful. And I I honestly cannot have asked for a better group of storytellers. Because they're not players, you're storytellers. And you told a beautiful, moving, heartbreaking story that is going to stick with me for a while. And I thank you. Because the story is yours. All I did was ask the questions. <sighs> Yay! <laughs> so good, so good. All right. Uh, Mal, how you doing? Um, yeah, that was a great, a great story. I mean, I loved everything, right? I just everyone's addition was so good and even though at, like almost immediately Pope tried to set a mood and then we broke it, that mood still carried through the rest of the way. We all kind of followed suit. Um, I mean, I, I love playing games with Cat. I am had a blast getting to play with Pope again because it's been a while. I'm so excited I finally got to play with you, Jim, and on your channel, and of course to meet Lydia. It was so much fun. 
Um, I don't know, let's see. I'm Mal. You can follow me at Twitter at Mal Hedale. The only thing I'm really doing is uh, tomorrow's the season premiere of Doors of Janeiro on the Academy, I believe, um, to give everyone that might not have caught up a little recap. Lots of things happened. My character is much, much older than at the start of the finale episode. <laughs> Similar to what happened <laughs> to Carl tonight. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that plays out tomorrow, maybe. Um, Don't go anywhere near cliffs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, because you said that, I have jumped off lots of cliffs <laughs> in that game already <laughs> for various reasons. <laughs> And there's bridges involved. Right. My, char my character is the jump into bad decisions all the time. Yeah. But that's it for me, I think. Right. Team well, bad life choices. <laughs> Thank you so much. I was so pleased to have you back on, by the way. It's been since, like, uh, yeah, it, it's been since, like, the, there was a Call of Cthulhu thing that, that, uh, that was run here, a uh, uh, one-shot run uh, here a while back that uh, you got to play on. I'm so glad we were able to get you back on. Awesome. And uh, now over to Lydia. I'm very happy that I got to play with you as well, because I was watching you from the shadows, Jim, over <laughs> the last uh, Dreams of Dust and Encounter Roleplay. And when this opportunity came up, I'm like, yeah, this is so down my alley in every single way and I would love to play with these people because I've played with cats before and I've watched Jim but um, Pope is the gift master of course but I haven't actually played with you either and Mal I keep seeing you in various streams and discord so it's like two ships in the night constantly <laughs> so this is great um, I'm Lydia I'm half arsed hermit and I'm emotional right now <laughs> which is also odd um, and you can find me uh, under that name in all socials and mostly an encounter roleplay where we're gearing up for the next season. So that's a lot of behind the scenes stuff uh, there. Um, yeah, um, Cobalt Press next Tuesday, I'm doing a GM advice show with, uh, with Nat, uh, Crime Nat, and I'm starting a game there as well uh, in August. So that, that's me. I I'm, I'm need more whiskey now. <laughs> that's your fault, Kat. <laughs> Oof. Dang. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming and playing. I, I am I'm pleased I got to play a game with you. Uh, it's because it's uh, it was uh, you were just so awesome during the uh, during the, the little dreams of dust thing, and uh, I, I was uh, I was curious to 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 to, uh, uh, to to get to play with you, and I was very pleased that we got to do that. It's very awesome. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Um, and uh, finally, Pope, how you doing? Hey everybody, Pope here. We'll, we'll we'll do the plug thing here in a bit. We'll just put a pin in that. Um, I adore this game. Hands down. You want to do something where you can shelter in place with friends? This Halloween, since probably we're not going to be trick-or-treating, I have a strong bit of advice for you. If you have a group of friends that are all sheltering in place together, do a double feature. Start with 10 candles. End with this. But if you have to meet your friends online, you saw how well this played out right here. Tell ghost stories. And if you're lucky, you get to tell them with amazing people like this. Now, Lydia, I have, uh, again, the admiring from afar thing uh, has <laughs> happened uh, in seeing you play and, 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 and making gifts. And thank you for all the clips. They, they make my life easy. But no, this, this was a delight to finally get to play with you. Mal, I love and adore you. I miss you. And this, this was the right game. This is where we get to turn the knives in each other, like old times. Cat, I adore you. Just that simple. Uh, you, you ever need some sort of curmudgeon? You come calling, I'll come running. Jim, 
I love you. I hate you. <laughs> now, as for me, uh, I'm Pope World Build on Twitter, Pope World Build on Twitch. I lurk in all your streams. If you want to see more of this silly face, well, you're in luck. In just a couple of hours, 9.30 Eastern, over on Matev 7s channel, we get down with something entirely different. Uh, as we get ready for Masks, Sunset City, see the myths, the misfits, and the bad life choices that they make with superpowers. Uh, and then a little bird has has told me that if you keep your eyes on this other doc channel at this other doc time, um, there may be a Monster of the Week game coming up with lots of sharp pointy things in a long hot summer till then take care and keep things just a bit macabre yes yes <laughs> and i actually have to say it's uh, i think it would be really neat to take that suggestion on board for uh, for a halloween and it would be fascinating to to do like I, 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 but I, I know I'd flip it and do a uh, Steel and Ox scenario that leads into a Ten Candles scenario. <laughs> With the same character. <laughs> the world ends for one person, then it ends for everyone. <laughs> you say the sweetest things, Jim. I know, it's a great idea. I, I, I like the idea anyway. Um, <laughs> these things happen. Ah, awesome. So awesome. Uh, well, I, I had a really good time with this, and uh, this is going to help me a great deal because i got to run this in a couple weeks. Uh, so um, <laughs> there, there's, uh, there's that, too. Uh, I, uh, I, will be, uh, I will be over in that, uh, in that window way over there um, in a couple weeks, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how I... Now that you've seen how it should be done, you'll get to see how I mess it up. So... Uh, <laughs> It's, to, uh, it's the easiest game that. in the world to run. You say, okay, here you go, guys. Have a secret. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. Your job's done. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting uh, that, yeah, where the facilitator actually knows a lot less than the players in this. So it's very much a, uh, it's, it's like, it's like being a player as well. They're outsourcing the work. Yeah. No, I, I, I am totally in support of that. Um, but uh, as for me, who am I? I'm Jim Ryan. You can find me at Other Doc on both Twitch and Twitter. My website is jimyesthatjim.com, where you can find my Geek Observation podcast and links to my various other podcasts, audio dramas, writings, and such. I have links down below on my Twitch page to my website, Twitter, YouTube channel, and some of my fiction and games I've been working on, along with links to game signups and applications to join our Discord. Uh, one more time, I'm just going to uh, remind folks this channel is currently involved in a donation drive uh, for the Bale Project uh, through our Sprawl campaign. Um, we, are, uh, we are Team Phyllis, named after an NPC in that campaign. Um, so feel free to go over there and check that out. That again is for, uh, it's for uh, 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 an organization that uh, uh, gives bail assistance to protesters, which is very important right now. Um, also, I urge folks to check out Campaign Zero, which is an organization dedicated to ending police violence, and they do a lot of research to try to make, bring that about. Um, so do check that out as well. Um, so what have we got happening? Um, well, for me personally, uh, tomorrow evening, um, I am over uh, Monday evenings. I'm over on Salty Sweet Games. We play in a, uh, uh, we're, we're playing a, our medieval fantasy RPG, Strange Invasion, um, and uh, we're we're. We're getting closer. We're getting closer to the aliens. I can feel it. There were robots last time. Um, hopefully we'll get more robots soon. Uh, and uh, let's see. On uh, Tuesday nights, back here on this channel, we have our short campaign this month of 50 Fathoms. Uh, it's the, uh, the, the fantasy, uh, fantasy pirate campaign set in Sav uh, using Savage Worlds. Uh, set in the world of Charybdis. Um, and uh, on Thursday night, this Thursday night will be... Provided all of our ducks are in a row, it will be the finale of The Sprawl. Um, so we have until then to make pledges. 
uh, uh, to, to make your donations. Uh, but uh, that's, that is a, a game that is powered by the apocalypse. It is cyberpunk, and we have a hell of a good time with it. I play a very, very kind killer, uh, killer cyborg. Um, <laughs> he's very nice, also kills people. Um, I'm sensing a theme like here with you, Tim. I, I, I have no idea what you mean. I, I, it's just, you know, it's, it's a total coincidence. It's a total coincidence. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, on, uh, on Saturday nights, uh, we have our Invisible Sun campaign, The Edge of Paradox. Uh, we're getting very close to the end of our, uh, what's going to culminate in basically a first season. We're going to go on hiatus soon. Um, we're not there yet, but soon, soon. Um, and uh, then, of course, one week from today, Sunday, we're going to have a one-shot of Monster of the Week, run by that gentleman up there, uh, who is, uh, I, I cannot wait to see what he's planning. Um, I, uh, I, 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 uh, very rarely get to play in, uh, in, in such games, and so I'm, I'm very excited to see what happens. Um, signups are still technically open for that, although we're probably going to cast within the next day. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you, you want a, you want a chance at getting in? Go ahead and uh, go ahead and sign up. We'll see. We've already uh, we uh, we'll be very much looking forward to that. Um, and uh, so very very much uh, very very much looking forward to that. Um, also, um, we do still have signups technically are open for the game of Schneel and Ock that I'm going to be running two weeks from today. Um, that uh, it's 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 on the form. You select the second one uh, I'm, uh, of, of the two options. If you select the first one, it's too late because this campaign, th this session is about to end. <laughs> but um, uh, we'll, we'll if you select the first one, we'll see if we can do any time travel. We're not, but we can't guarantee it. Um, can't quite move that fast. One tries, but you know. Um, but if you ever want to sign up for anything, uh, you go down below to uh, click on RPG sign up. Or you go to jimyesthatjim.com and click on game sign up. As always, beginners are welcome. So, when we hit the end card, um, the friend of the channel, regular on the channel, Anino, is playing uh, a game called Fire Emblem. Let's go say hi to him. Um, Before, mm -hmm. everybody, if you like the music and the mood that this game sets, check out what's going to be playing over that end card. You want to take a listen? Oh yeah, yeah. There, there is that. I'll leave the end card up for a little bit so you can, so you can at least hear the uh, beginning before I initiate the raid. As uh, <laughs> turns out, I found an appropriate song. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so after we hit the end card, after a little bit, we'll go ahead and initiate a raid over there. Feel free to hang on if you are so inclined and, and say hi to Anina with us. In the meantime, folks, thank you all very much for watching. Take care, and I will see you all of a sudden. Farewell. Still.